Thank you for listening to the following films podcast. Today we have two interviews for you. First, I'm joined by Michael Showalter, director of The Idea of You. And after the break, I'm joined by Simon Kellen Jones, director of Arthur the King. Based on the acclaimed contemporary love story of the same name, The Idea of You centers on Solan, played by Anne Hathaway, who's a 40-year-old single mom who begins an unexpected romance with 24-year-old Hayes Campbell, the lead singer of August Moon, an incredibly popular boy band. In Arthur the King, an unbreakable bond is forged between pro-adventure racer Michael Light and a scrappy street dog companion dubbed Arthur over the course of a grueling 10-day, 435-mile race course. An inspiring story for the whole family based on true events. Arthur the King follows Light, desperate for one last chance to win, as he convinces a sponsor to back him and a team of athletes for the Adventure Racing World Championships in the Dominican Republic. Pushing the team to the outer limits of endurance and sacrifice, Arthur redefines what victory, loyalty, and friendship truly mean. The Idea of You will be on Amazon Prime on May 2nd, and Arthur the King is currently available on VOD and in theaters everywhere. I hope you enjoy the show. Thanks. Perfect. Hey, Michael, how are you today? Hi, Chris. How are you? I am good. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this today, man. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. So, okay. I know we only have five minutes and I could <laughs> easily go on for an hour about this. So there's one, one of my favorite things is when a film has a moment or a shot that I think encapsulates the entire film and your oh. film has that. Oh, interesting. So um, to me, this whole movie could be really wrapped up. And there's a moment towards the end of the film where the star-crossed lovers are embracing and they're kissing and the lighting is mirroring the painting. And so you go through all the colors of the lighting and then you show the painting. And I really felt like that just showed kind of what all the film had been building towards. And really that's the moment that made the ending work for me, that that earned your ending was that. And could you just talk possibly about the importance of that specific moment? Yeah. I mean, for me, um, I'm glad you recognize that moment. I love that moment. Um, they're honoring this love affair that they've had. They're 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 going to break up. They're going to go their separate ways. They both know that that's inevitable, and that it's right. And um, but instead of them feeling sorry for themselves or or uh, you know, mo you know, being super upset about it, they celebrate. They they celebrate and honor this thing that they shared. And that was really important to me. And the um, the kind of visual connection between the lights and this painting, it did kind of bring it all together. We wanted that moment to be a kind of a surreal moment. You don't know if that's what's really happening or not. When that that scene you're t- describing is kind of a a fantasy almost. It's not really what happened, but it is what happened. It's and, emotionally uh, honest. It's not, it's that. Exa- yeah, exactly. And so, um, the, the, actually the, the dolly shot to the painting was Anne's idea. Um, and, and she made that connection and it worked, be- it works beautifully in the film. It really does. And it's just, it's one of those things that shows a, a, it's what makes your films and films like this work for me where you could take this concept and this conceit and I've seen, you know, a million different versions of it and I don't necessarily connect with it, but this, and that is really what makes this work because of how thoughtful it is. And you can tell this never really takes the simple way out that this is a really, I think an honest film that I, even though if you've never been in this specific situation, I think that we all have moments in our lives when there's outside pressures and responsibilities, even where this isn't the time for yourself, it's the time for another, or, you know, the, if, you know, being a dad, um, that's, you know, I got a 13 year old and an eight year old in the house right now. So there's a lot of times where we're, me and my wife are putting things off for ourselves because this isn't necessarily our time at this moment. We'll get back to that again. We can be self. My, my twenties are long gone though, at this point, if that makes sense. A hundred percent. I, that's it. You nailed it. And <laughs> so, and I love that. I love that he, um, there's something really wonderful about, I think Hayes knows, he knows that that's right. Yeah. He knows that, that, um, I just, yeah, I mean, exactly what you said. And that's what, that's what it means to become an adult and to, and to, and to, 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 um, to grow emotionally, to grow spiritually, all of those things. And that's, 
ultimately what both of them do as a result of their experience together is they grow some of they they heal they heal they grow they evolve and then of course it sets the stage for maybe something else well that that's the idea all of these relationships that we enter into um even the ones that don't end well and i guess by well um, that simply just means that you don't end up together forever. Uh, I'm a better person for everyone right, that I've been right. with in my life that I've connected with. I'm changed exactly. by all of them. Exactly. I love the line where she says to him, um, if you get a shot at happiness, you take it. And I will too. Absolutely. And, and that, and that, that it is that thing that when you truly care about somebody, when you truly love them, yes. you, you put their happiness before yes. your own yes. and they're yes. both doing that for each other. Yes. And I love, I love that moment. Yeah. That, Fantastic. And so could you just talk real quick? I know we're probably right at time here, but I, I'm really happy this film, while it was probably made at the height of COVID protocols, this does not feel like a COVID film at all, the scope and scale of this thing, because it's, you know, we've had probably three years now of chamber pieces and you can feel scale here. And it's <laughs> yeah. nice to see that again. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was actually at the end of COVID. So we were like, okay. we we were, we were, um, the masks were like 50, 50% 50 on, 50% off, although honestly, it's all a blur. But um, <laughs> there was still definitely a COVID, you know, team on the movie and everything. Um, but um, it's nice to have that in the rearview mirror. Um, it was a lot of, it was hard. It was a hard, that was a hard couple of years to have to be trying to to do these things in that, in those, in those circumstances. But um, we were, yeah, there's the, the you know we we actually shot the whole movie in Atlanta, so it oh it, wow yeah the whole movie, so we're in L A we're in New York we're at Coachella we're in Europe, uh, we're in the south of France, um, and uh, that's all in uh, Atlanta. I was born in Georgia, and I never would have known. I grew up in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and I would never have had any idea. So well done. Yep. Man. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Michael, you've been one of those guys that's been on my bucket list to interview for a very long time. I'm sorry it was only for five minutes. I would love to chat with you for longer, but even this, it was a pleasure to meet you, man. And Thank congratulations. you so much. You, you I appreciate it. You got a special one. And by, and by the way, just the last thing I'll say, and then I'll let, let you go, but um, I've always loved the Baxter because it feels like it was written by somebody who understood the ending of The Graduate. And I think a lot of people kind of miss the point of that movie. And I feel like you completely, I, I just, th those movies are just a, my favorite double feature. Mine too. Mine too. Oh, well, thank you, man. Thank you so much, Christopher. It means a lot. I really, I really appreciate it. Awesome. I really well, Thanks, congratulations, man. man. Take, Take care. care. Be well. Uh, you too. Bye-bye. This episode of the following films podcast is brought to you by Bookman's. So today I went into Bookman's and decided to try to find a film by Michael Mann. I went over to the Blu-ray section and saw copies of several films I already own. And then I found it black hat. This is one I haven't seen in quite a while since it came out. And I figured maybe it was time for a reassessment of this much maligned film. So black hat is a cyber crime thriller directed by Michael Mann that delves into the world of cybercrime, hacking and international intrigue. While it promises to be a gripping exploration of the dangers lurking in the digital age, the execution falls short of expectations. The film follows convicted hacker played by Chris Hemsworth, who's temporarily released from prison to help the American and Chinese authorities track down a criminal uh, network that's responsible for a series of major attacks. As the hunt takes them across the globe, Hemsworth's character must navigate the murky waters of the criminal underworld while grappling with his own demons. Um, one of the film's major shortcomings is his lack of technical accuracy and realism. While it attempts to portray the world of hacking authentically, it often falls into cliches and inaccuracies that ultimately undermine the credibility of the story. So the hacking sequences are exaggerated and unrealistic, relying more on flashy visuals than genuine technical expertise. And this is coming from an absolute layman. I am not somebody who knows anything about hacking, and yet I can see some of the things that just flat out aren't true in this film. And that particular disconnect may disappoint viewers familiar with the subject matter or looking for a more grounded portrayal of cybercrime. So despite these flaws though, Black Hat does have its moments. Uh, Michael Mann's signature style is evident in the film's 
beautiful, sleek cinematography and the signature action sequences. And the international setting adds depth to the narrative. Uh, it highlights the global nature of cyber threats and the challenges of international cooperation. Chris Hemsworth delivers a solid performance as Hathaway bringing the character a sense of depth who's grappling for redemption. And the supporting cast uh, includes, I had no idea, I'd completely forgotten this, but Viola Davis, um, who's really great in the film and adds a lot to the film. But ultimately, Black Hat falls short of its potential. While it offers a glimpse into the world of cybercrime and espionage, its lack of technical accuracy and reliance on cliches detracts from the overall experience. And despite its flaws, fans of Michael Mann's work or of the cyber thriller genre, I guess if you're a huge Johnny Mnemonic fan and you're looking for some more cyber thriller, you could do worse than Black Hat. However, for those seeking a more realistic, nuanced uh, exploration of hacking and cybersecurity, this might leave you wanting more, and I'm not sure I can recommend this one. But despite that, this gave me the chance to check out a film that I've been meaning to reevaluate because I keep hearing that Black Hat is an underrated film, and maybe I'll give it another 10 years, follow back up with this one, and see if it does end up coming around for me. But remember, Bookman's. They have your cool covered. Hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks. How's that? There we go. Perfect. I am so sorry to be late. How are you? I'm nice to see you. No worries. No worries, man. How are you today? I'm very good. I'm sincere apologies, but here we are. <laughs> it's very nice to be here. What's going on? Not much. Not much. How, how are things? Are you in England right now? I'm in England, and it's it stopped raining. But it was <laughs> raining for five months, um, <laughs> and it's going to rain tomorrow. But yeah, anyway. Oh, there you, you know. go. <laughs> the, the, the rainy season is over. For, yeah, for where are you? Good. I'm I'm in a uh, Tucson, Arizona. So oh, okay, right, beautiful place. Yeah, pretty much uh, as opposite uh, weather or climate as you could get from England. So that's right. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, I was in Phoenix quite recently, and it actually, well, it was forget what it was, and it was 114. Yeah, sounds about right. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things where you wonder how people ever lived here. Uh, yeah, you get out, exactly. So. It's but, nice if you, if you're a cactus. <laughs> that, that's about it. A cactus and a coyote. Those are the, yeah, the only yeah, things yeah. that really belong here. So, well, thank you for taking the time to uh, chat about the movie, man. Con congratulations, you got a hell of a movie here. So, thank I, you so much. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. I think this is going to be one of those ones that people continue to to discover for years to come. There's a I lot of it. films that feel you see them and they feel very much of the moment. And uh, they are not necessarily disposable, but you can tell that in a couple of years, this might not be as relevant. This is one that I can imagine 10, 20 years from now, a family picking up and getting just as much out of it then as they do today. Fantastic. Do you have a dog? Uh, I have actually two in the room with me right now. So. Oh, show me them. Where are they? Yeah. Uh, Yogi, come here. This is, oh, this is... lovely. Yeah. A big <laughs> well, we have. I have two. I have uh, Yogi and Charlie. Uh, Yogi is a Great Dane mix, so he's about seventy pounds, and then Charlie is a uh, wiener dog mix, so he's about twenty pounds. So, excellent, excellent. I bet you, he's the boss. Well, uh, well, no, the little guy is the boss for sure. That's what I mean. That's yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you? Are you a dog guy? Yeah, I've got a uh, a border collie, uh, a German Shepherd, and their daughter, so a mix. Oh wow. Uh, three dogs, by the way, is too many. My wife would not listen to me. <laughs> uh, you know, we just, we, yes, we were in that same spot not that long ago. And three is one. definitely too many. Yeah. We just have the two right now. Uh, three is a lot. It's it, just yeah. the walking with the three. It's not, walking. you can't do it solo. Yeah. 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 But anyway, okay, good. Well, I'm glad it's always, always, uh, you know, dogs are infuriating, but you, you got to love them. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. It's, you know, kind of like having kids. It's hard to imagine the house without them. Um, yeah. you know, cause we're just in the middle of all that right now. And I, I can't imagine when it's just the two of us not having dogs, you know, once the kids are out of the house for sure. But definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then <laughs> how did you come onto this project? Cause, um, th this is, it, it's a, just a cool little story. One I wasn't familiar with apparently I, you know, it's so easy to miss things now. And this was a pretty big story, but I just, you know, wasn't aware of this before. This this came to me a while ago, sort of right in the middle of lockdown, actually, with the COVID mm. situation. Um, and I think it's it's a film that they they've been planning to sort of make in a different way or whatever. And then, you know, in the COVID, everything everything sort of went a bit crazy. 
and suddenly it became available. And I, I, I sort of slightly knew Mark, and I and I I know his producer. He works with a lot, um, Stephen Levinson, and they sent me the script. You know, just just as a rather than an offer, they said, "Hey, have a look," and I loved it. And I sort of thought, "I'm going to kick the door in here, and I probably won't get the job, but what the hell? I might as well go for it." And for whatever reason, I got the job and had a fantastic time. And I think um, Mark Wahlberg, I've got to tell you, I mean, I, I sound like his sort of manager, but he's so fun and cool and brilliant to work with. It's like, oh, I was I was initially, you know, I was nervous. It's a pretty big movie star. And, sure. you know, you all hear the stories, not about Mark, but you hear stories about how actors can behave and so on. He was he was just brilliant. Um, and he was very good, which is the thing I like most, I guess. But he's also a sweetheart. He's a sort of he got a, he sees the big picture. So you know, and and we in fact we went on to make another film that came out slightly before this. Um, and I hope you know I'll definitely work with him anytime I can. Well, I, I can see why he's he's one of those rare movie stars that just feels like an actual human being. He doesn't feel like he doesn't seem like he's from another planet. There's certain movie right. stars they have that thing that just draws you into them but th this is just he feels like somebody that you could know even though he <laughs> is utterly charming wildly talented but he is somebody that definitely feels like a regular guy in a lot of ways yeah 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 i think i think that's that's definitely that was great for the movie and uh you know he he never stops he really doesn't well it, it shows in the the body of work that he's turned out for sure, sure. but as important as getting that casting right which he was already there but getting the dog right in a film like this essentially the co-star or the dogs i'm not sure how you did this one but um is well, this well it was we did have three dogs okay um but one of them shone through the sort of the main one we thought this is this is probably the one and i think he was in every single shot i think we used one of the other dogs for a distant wide shot okay know? but yeah he, i mean as you say it's it's pretty much as almost as important as, as our lead actor. Um, we had a long search and then the film got delayed. And so we actually had more time to train him, but he was a very young dog. He's only two at the time. Uh, he was a sort of mash up, whatever he was, a bit of golden retriever, a bit of, you know, uh, a bit of one of those doodle dogs in there. And <laughs> he was a, he was great. I mean, you know, the first week I was going, Oh my God, I'm going to go mad. But because, you know, uh, with an actor, you can, you know, you can ask them to do something. If they don't want to, they'll tell you and, yeah. and they'll explain why or whatever. But with a dog, you just got to be patient. And there's no point in hassling and getting upset because that they'll pick that up, obviously. But, you know, after a while, I think the dog started to enjoy himself. Uh, and I think he kind of, he kind of liked the work. You know, he's an intelligent dog. Um, and Mark, again, Mark was very good with him, put in the hours in preparation, hanging out with him and stuff. And, and that was invaluable. Um, so yeah, I would work with a dog again, funnily enough. <laughs> well, it, there, there is something that, uh, there's many similarities we have with, uh, with dogs, but one of those is that sense of purpose. And when you have a job, when you have something, yeah. a trajectory, a thing that you're going down that you can feel a sense of reward from, and you can feel like you have something you need to get up in the morning and do that day. Uh, I, I think that you do when I'm, you know, taking my dogs and out on a regular basis and doing things, you can tell the difference between even one day, if I skip a walk or anything like that, that there yeah. is something that changes in them. And I feel it's the same thing with me. If I don't have, if I feel rudderless, uh, it's just a horrible feeling. So I can't imagine stopping working. Well, that exactly, exactly. And I've got a border collie in there, of course. That, oh, that they're working dogs. They they yeah. Yeah. And so I just, I've just been out with him just now, actually. And, uh, you know, he's going, right, what are we doing next? What's happening? Come on, let's go. <laughs> so then um, where did you shoot this? Dominican Republic. Okay. Um, beautiful island. Um, the sort of outside bit is full of lovely beaches and is kind of touristy. Mm -hmm. But you go know, even a couple of miles inland and it's jungle or it's small villages. Um, really, I, I funny enough, I made a TV show there many, many years ago. It's a beautiful place. I love the people. And it's also got this incredible city, Santo Domingo, which is the biggest in the Caribbean, which is, you know, it's, it's where 
it's where colonialism was was activated in a in a good way by the uh, by Columbus, you know, by discovering this island. Um, and yeah, it was it was a great great place to shoot. Um, and of course, we were doing it in COVID, so we all had to be locked away and wear masks and travel in separate buses and stuff. But actually, it worked out and it was fun. Um, and I would definitely work there again. Well. I'm glad that you brought up the the COVID aspect of this because this is something that a lot of the films that I've been watching over the last you know year year and a half you can you they have that sense you can feel the scale has been pushed back and there was a much bigger story that wanted to be told but okay this is what we have to do in this moment this is how we'll have to tell the story this doesn't have that feeling which is something that a lot of films right now that are being released there a time capsule that you'll be able to say okay this was the five years of chamber pieces when everything right. was just yeah yeah yeah. yeah. But yeah. now th this is something that doesn't have that, where you do have a sense of scale and you can feel an entire world around this film. So that, that had to be something I think you were conscious of not uh, reflecting the COVID times. Very much so. I mean, we were, you know, it's it, it was oppressive, uh, the COVID thing, but we, you know, we, we had five or six people whose job it was to keep us from kissing each other or being too close or whatever. They were supposed to, but they were, they, were, they were very nice to work with. And I think the one advantage we had is is the, the vast majority of our film was outdoors. Yes. So it's it's easier, of course, to you still have to observe a lot of protocols. But um, and what we did was we had to drag our cast and crew into the jungle. And it you know when we when there's a scene at the top of a big hill, everybody goes up the big hill, and you can't drive up it. You have to carry everything. Um, so it was a kind of a you know I'm. I'm in the. Uh, I'm still immensely young, of course, but I'm I'm not as young as I used to be. And it, you know, climbing up a hill is pretty tough, but everyone else had to do it, so I had to. And I think, you know, it was a, it was a real camaraderie thing there. We just, you know, loaded up the equipment on, you know, ATVs and things like that, and just hiked hiked into the jungle. And I think, uh, you know, we all lost a bit of weight. <laughs> I could only imagine that hiking with equipment would, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be some intense cardio. So yeah, ma yeah. maybe Mark was the only one prepared for that kind of, uh, activity. He, he was, he was pretty fit as, <laughs> as famously, of course, but you know, it, even, even he found it tough sometimes. Oh, of course. Well, there's the difference between, um, when you, train and then training in a sauna it's it's a world of yeah. difference so when you try that right. it's a training in a sauna, sauna full of full of mosquitoes exactly <laughs> well this is um how has this been now that the you you make a film release it into the world and you get the sort of audience feedback at this point and i don't get to talk to people at this point very often where it's actually been in the world for a little bit i usually am right on the cusp of it so now that you've started to get that feedback, because everybody that I've talked to about the film has really enjoyed it. So what has the reaction been like? I mean, it's it's been great. I mean, it, I think I think it's rating on Rotten Tomatoes is something like 97 percent. Yeah, it's really strong, um, which is like, wow, we were, you know, we were sort of well, we weren't shocked, but we were we were pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, I think I think. I always say that if you've got a dog, you have to watch this movie. But if you don't have a dog, you still have to watch it because yeah. you know it's got the same, the same sort of stuff. And um, I'm I'm glad to hear you say that it, that you know people can discover it in a few years' time because I think I think that's true. I think it's not completely timeless, but it is. It's one of those things that you know it's about sort of a ragtag team that are, that are sort of in the, in the last chance saloon. And uh, their life and their course of their life changes through some meeting in a weird jungle. And, you know, I, I, I don't want to make only sort of wholesome and heartwarming films. But, you know, we did lean into the, it is one of those films. Yeah. Interestingly, um, a lot of, when we were talking to our marketing people, they were going to go, oh, we've got to tell people the dog doesn't die. And I was going, well. <laughs> then you feel the tension. Yeah, well, that's the thing. And I was saying, please, please don't say that because the whole point is that if you know the dog's going to live, you're not going to feel the pain when it nearly dies. Um, so fortunately, they sort of, they didn't go global with that information because, I, because you know, I think a lot of people 
feel when they go and see a movie, even if it's really good and the dog dies, that it's just such a downer. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, man. That's like terrible. Um, so, but you, I am a believer in putting, making an audience earn their happiness and their joy. Of course. Cause, and that's okay. So there's a, you mentioned the idea of this being wholesome and yeah, th- this is something that falls into that, but it never gets saccharine. It never feels overly sweet or overly sentimental. Cause really this is, to me, it's a story about a man that really doesn't have many options left at this point. He's at the end of his, Absolutely. And, and you have this dog that's in the same place. And there's that mirroring of these two things and these two individuals that find each other and make themselves better, which is, you know, that, that kind of relationship, we find it with our animals, we find it with our partners, we find it with friends. And it's something that we often, it's a relationship that most people can, I think, relate to in that way. Cause we've all found somebody at that right moment in time that you needed that other being in your life and you just happenstance come into each other. And I think that the, that's what this story is to me. That's the thing that I really related to here. Right. I think, I think that's, I think that's really true. And, you know, again, it's, it's that thing of, um, I, I often say that, you know, that the film is about winning. Um, and initially our lead character is obsessed with winning yeah. and he's, um, and then of course, without trying to get too clever, there are different ways of winning, you know, yeah. you don't just have to cross the line first, you can sort of come to a realization, you can fall in love, you can do all sorts of things that actually make your life better. Well, absolutely. That's the, uh, there's a emptiness in winning and those sorts of goals. There's this the thing that I heard once where, um, about goals that when you get to the mountaintop, when you get to the peak, all that you see is other mountaintops. You don't have any <laughs> sense of real true change. The things that you anticipate when you achieve greatness, when you achieve the goals that you've set before yourself, right, right, you, right. you just see more goals. And so you have to embrace that journey. And this movie is really about that journey, I think. That's right. And it's, you know, it's interesting you mentioned the mountaintop thing, because I just, uh, like everybody, I think, recently I've seen some pictures of Everest. Yeah. Like a 200-person queue. Yep. And just get up there, take selfie, take another selfie, go down. Yep. Um, and it's weird. It, it's It's very bizarre how that's become a cottage industry of – a destination like that. It's very, it's, it's, you know, these places that, you know, Everest, Machu Picchu, any of those things that would just be a place to go like that, that would be a, it feels like you're, it is a selfie. It's not about that, the journey aspect of it. It is getting there to have that, you know, that social media post, which that's to me a fairly empty pursuit. I I don't feel a lot of fulfillment from those moments. Yeah. I mean, Yes, it's a, it's a, you're right. It's a changing world and, and we, we have to accept that that's how a lot of the world works. And, you know, I've, I'm trying not to become a dinosaur because I want to say, Hey, don't let kids have phones. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but you know, uh, you gotta, you gotta let the world happen. Haven't you? Well, I mean, I've never spent an hour on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it happens to be. And at the end of it felt like that was an hour well spent. I'm really glad I did that with my, you know, and and it's, I I felt that way about, and it's not just the consumption aspect because I felt that way going to see a film. I felt that way reading a book. I felt that way listening to an album. There's something about the distraction of cell phones that it just doesn't, it creeps away at you and it's not a great feeling. And I, social media, I think that it's, hopefully changing. And so I, I think that we're just at the real early stages of it, but I think 10 years from now, it'll look wildly different and I hope for the better. Yeah. Good. Me too. Me too. Really. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this, man. I really enjoyed the film. I do got to ask you about one shot though. In the okay. movie, there's this moment, um, that was, it was so horrifying to witness that like I literally I, I have this thing where I laugh out loud when I get uncomfortable, and it was yep. the fact that there was, there was a shot where I'll just I don't want to spoil it if somebody hasn't seen the film, but where the dog is swimming, and there's the moment that there's a little bit of tension there, and yeah. I could not believe that that existed as a shot in this film. There's really rarely I see something I've never seen before, and that was something I had never seen before with a dog in that shot, and I, I just absolutely adored that moment. Oh, good, good. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, dog did its own stunts. <laughs> Jesus, man, because it, it's one of those things. When I saw that that specific shot, my it's it's that how did they pull that off? 
how did that happen? And I can't believe it had the, um, for, you know, mind my language, but it had the balls to do that. Good. That, that, that Good. That's something I can imagine a studio saying, okay, let's, let's not go that far with this moment. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, as like, like we were saying, uh, whether or not there's a happy ending. And as you say, for people who haven't seen this movie, we, wanna, we don't want to tell them, but we, we want people to earn yeah. any enjoyment they have. <laughs> well, that's the better joy, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Joy exactly. that's handed to you never, it doesn't feel earned. It doesn't feel great. It goes away. It's empty calories. It's cotton there candy. You, you know, there you have you joy that it, you have joy that you earn. That's nourishment. That'll feed you for days, if not weeks. So exactly. congratulations on creating some nourishment, man. Thank you so much. It's really nice to say. I'm so sorry I was a moment late. You're but fine, man. No worries. It was really, it was really worth it to me as well to talk to awesome. you. Awesome. Thank Thanks you, Simon. So great to meet you. Congratulations. Great to see you. Bye. Okay, thank you.